back. This is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. Welcome back to Boomer Life here on Sea Isle 650. Sterling Fox with a whole group of good people from Rivera Retirement Living and specifically Fleetwood Villa in Surrey. Simone Polair is the executive director at uh, Fleetwood Villa. Uh, Michelle Weibolt is their lifeti- lifestyle consultant. And Kerry Jackson is here from Rivera, B.C. and head office downtown. We're talking about community living, and we were just mentioning just before we uh, were seniors community living, to be quite specific. Kerry gave me that eyebrow. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but what, we're, what I was hoping that I might be able to persuade you three to help me out with, because I'm a boomer and um, my mom's 92, and uh, she's not interested in this retirement community business. So, uh, my brother and I are, you know, dead set on helping her enjoy her life as much as she can, and and we can input into it. So, when we go out uh, to make inquiries. Um, we have to have we have to have our ducks in a row. Mom's not going to take any guff from either one of us. So we really have to know when we sit down. It's going to be rather a hostile conversation, and so we really have to be well armed. So when we come to you, Michelle, you're the lifestyle consultant at Fleetwood Villa, yeah. and you're the one that probably more than any of the other three in the room sees us boomers uh, making inquiries on behalf of mom and or dad. So. When we come in, we what do we want to know, and what is it that you found is most helpful information that we didn't even ask for? Well, a, a lot of people, when they come see us, it's, it's perhaps mums had a fall mm-hmm. or, or mums of advanced years, a, and so you're more you're you're acting more of a reactive manner. Yes. And the problem is when you're reacting, you're not getting your facts. You're not finding out what really is important. What does mum want? What does mum hope her life? is going to be like what is it going to look like and all you're what? reacting to is she needs attention because she's had a fall and can't move back that's, home. A, that's exactly it now now so, again so immediately as the kid i'm sorry to interrupt but yeah. as the kid you're thinking sort of quasi hospital oh. Well, and that's really not what mom wants. Well, I'll bet you dollars to donuts. Well, that's exactly it. And that, that's what we have to make clear to mom is, is we, again, have 24-hour nursing, a doctor on site every second Wednesday. We have all these supports in place but, to help her. But but the thing is, we need to talk to the seniors as adults. They are adults. And we need to sort of sell them on the idea that community living is great and it's fun and you're not losing your independence. And, and I think... Uh, the way a lot of boomer children position it to their parents is it's sort of like, okay, your time has come. You need to go to the old folks' home. Yes. And, and, and that's the problem. And, and would you be willing to sign up for that? I know at 48, uh, no way would I be prepared. Well, no. Mm-hmm. I, if someone had positioned it, like, you need care. They've got assistance, but you're going to have a much fuller life. You're going to have friends. You're going to have activities. You're going to have outings. It, it, it's coming at it from a whole different perspective. Instead of looking at it strictly as care, the care is there. Sure, sure. Sure. But it, it's a lifestyle, and it, and it's something I think the boomers really need to understand. And I think Simone, you know, and I think Michelle's got an, uh, made an excellent point because when we now think about my mom, she's 92. When I talk, when Peter and I talk to my mother about, well, we, we'd like you to at least consider the this option. Um, in her mind, she sees the old folks' home. Mm-hmm. That she used to have to go to my bro- when my brother and I were really little, we had to we got dragged kicking and screaming to this home because my my mom had to go visit her great aunt, yeah. and it was a mm-hmm. terrible place. Exactly. And when Peter and I talked to my mom about, well, we'd like you to consider a seniors community uh, lifestyle. I mean, it's pretty smooth, mom. All she sees in her mind's eye yeah. is that dreadful old place, and she just and so w- you're right, Michelle. We have to learn to communicate what this lifestyle is all about and simone it is um, the about as far away as almost the exact opposite of that dreadful old home but so many of them still see that in their mind's eye don't they they do so the boomers have got to do a better job of changing that that's correct and that's the reason why we encourage the um, children to bring their parents in 
um, to have a tour and uh, speak to Michelle. Right. Uh, so we, Michelle can identify, you know, what it is that they're really looking for, whether it's socially or medically. Mm -hmm. um, and then they can, as I said, once they see the community, they can actually witness for themselves, oh, this is not you know, the home that I was picturing in my mind. Exactly. Right, because they get to see when they're walking around, I mean, our residents and our staff are very engaging. Um, so they would actually feel right then and there that they're very well, it's a welcoming environment. Um, and it's very vibrant, like, they would see people actually doing things that they yeah. that they enjoy. And so, and Michelle, that's yeah. why it's even more important to educate the kids and, and to to stand a chance of educating mom and well, dad. So when the kids come to yeah. uh, to Fleetwood Villa. Do you tour them first and Absolutely. then say, next time, bring your mom with you? Uh, Sterling, I'm so glad you mentioned that. I implore all of Sterling's listeners today to please give Michelle at Fleetwood Villa a call. Anytime you would like to have a tour of our community, I would be over the moon, overjoyed to show you around. I think in large part what's missing, when people come into the community, they see our residents. Well, if they're not introduced to the residents, you see an old person. And, and you don't recognize the True. life, the 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 breadth and depth that this person's lived. We've got a fabulous lady Joan. She was a French professor at UBC. Mm. We have a gentleman Len who is who is a uh, jazz aficionado. But if you come for a two-minute tour of our community, you don't see all this history and this vibrancy. Mm -hmm. You think mom's fallen, she needs to move in. Absolutely. Let her come for those reasons. But recognize that although we are a community that offers care and support, we offer a wonderful lifestyle if you'd actually look beyond just the wrinkles and perhaps the older skin mm -hmm. and you see these personalities. Then the kids don't feel so afraid to talk to mom because it's not about putting mom in a home. Mm -hmm. It's about providing mom a wonderful, or dad, mm -hmm. we, we're 70% right. women. We, we would like some men. The, my residents are asking me, they'd like to meet some men. But, okay, fair enough. But um, so, <laughs> so God I, bless them all for that. That's oh, yes. it, but I, I think that's what it is, is, is it's exactly what you've mentioned, Sterling. People think of old folks from years gone back, the old folks' homes. Mm -hmm. it, it's, we offer, probably the same level of care, but we now recognize yourself, myself, we expect more as we age. Age is more. We want lifestyle. If our back's giving out, well, we'll use a walker. Sure. If we can't dress ourselves, well, we've got nurses to help, but it doesn't mean we're going to stop having fun for the afternoon. Right. It, right. It's all this, and it's changing the dynamic where we're, we don't think of old people sitting in a corner. We, we recognize that they're filled with life and excitement and hopes and dreams, and and that's what our community is about. And once you let the kids know that, they get excited about it. Yeah, Carrie, M Michelle made a really good point there about uh, our parents uh, need at all times to be regarded and treated as adults. Yes, uh, we get to be, you know, we're the caregivers now and we're the bossy ones. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? Uh, these, uh, you, you can't institutionalize someone against their will. And that's the mindset that you're confronted with by by resistant parents. And in many cases, it's because they're being treated disrespectfully. They're being told, well, you know, we're going to put you in one of those places now because, you know, you're 85 and that's that. Well, hello, uh, a little respect goes an awfully long way. Did anyone ask how I felt about that? So when you... Uh, instruct your people like Michelle, because you're the boss for all of BC, how do you train your staff to make sure there is that measure of respect at all times oh, for their parents? Absolutely. It seems as plain as the nose on your face, but we get so busy trying to manage everything, we the boomers, sometimes we get a little too bossy. Well, just with that, I mean, we don't allow anyone to move into our community without having been to the community and having had an opportunity to meet with our lifestyle consultant and or any of our other staff at the building. Right. We really, we want to have that connection. We want to have the meeting because it's about the resident. It's about what they want to do and what they see themselves doing. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes the questions about looking at what they used to do. It's not about what they're doing today because as we mentioned, their life is really, uh, Kind of shrunk down sure. into something mm -hmm. different whereas you know they may have a huge list of 
activities and interests that they would love to do given the opportunity and we want to open that up and be able to provide them with the ability to do all of those things right. so again part of our our process we call it discovery we're discovering about the resident about the prospect and we want to know all of these great things and how we can match them with the activities that we have going on in our community so it's very much we need to meet that resident we need to meet them and get to know them and then be able to fit them best into our community. Right. Michelle, when, when the boomers come by themselves, yeah. either as siblings or individuals or son and daughter-in-law, that kind of thing, what kinds of questions do we ask? I mean, I suppose there are lots of, well, how much does it cost? And what's the food like? And uh, uh, do, can you have pets? What, are, what, other, what, other, what are the big questions, the boomers, not on our parents, that yeah. we have for you? You know what's really interesting is, is I, I deal with a lot of families. Their question is, is my mom or dad going to die? That, that the, it's this omnipresent thing because these are your parents. You mm. never want to lose them. Mm -hmm. And if your parents, 70, 80, 90, you know what? It, it might at some point happen. Uh, but I like to turn that around because every single one of us has an expiration stamped on us. We mm -hmm. don't know what that expiration is. We just know that it's there. So until that moment comes that that stamp is snuffed out, I want to make sure everybody has a wonderful, awesome existence, a wonderful life. So a lot of families ask what can you do? And I, I guess what I suggest to them is perhaps what Rivera at Fleetwood Villa is so good at doing is providing hope. Because when there's hope, they're, 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 people are flooded with excitement and they want to live and they want to carry on. And it really, it really, with a lot of our seniors, it gives them the oomph they need mm -hmm. to say, I want to go another round. This right. is too good to give up on. And so I guess when the kids ask a lot of things, I, I warn them, I warn them very sincerely because when mom or dad moves in, mom and dad is going to be, are going to be going to our choir practice, yep. to our, to our parties on Friday afternoons. They're going to be going to our bingo, our knitting, our knitting. They're going to be doing so much. And then I get, I, I, I have had so many calls where the children, the boomers, they phone and they go, where's my mom? Where's my mom? And I, I, I frantically look around the building thinking, what's going on? Where's mom? Where's dad? Where's Jack? Where? Right. I look around. Well, sure enough, they're sitting there socializing with somebody. Right. They're down in osteo fit. Right. They're over at the buffet having something to eat. Well, the, the boomer kids are so beside themselves because they're used to mom and dad always being sitting on that couch ready to pick up the phone. Sure. Now they're not ready to pick up the phone because they're living life. Mm -hmm. So that that's really what I tell them is get get. Whether there's a walker involved, whether there's mobility issues, maybe the eyesight isn't so good. Yep. That doesn't mean that it needs to detract from a full, exciting life. So if someone is more introverted and they like reading books, we've got a fabulous library. Right. People like the party, we've got it. People like the food, there's everything there. But you do have to be warned, all you boomers listening, when your parents move into Fleetwood Villa and you're calling, they're not going to be answering because they're too busy living life. <laughs> so be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's a nice problem to have, isn't it, it, is, it Simone? It is. There's so many choices um, at Fleetwood Villa, whether it's in food or recreation. There's, you know, there's just a lot of things that that the residents will enjoy. I was kind of flippantly asking about pets. Is it a pet-friendly environment? It is a pet-friendly. We, in fact, currently have three little dogs okay. and several okay. cats. Right. A on our first floor, yes. And if someone moves to Fleetwood Villa and they're still mobile, you were talking about mobility, Michelle, can yeah. they bring the car with them? Is there a parking Absolutely. spot? Oh, yes, we do have a parking spot. Okay. Yeah. So okay. all of those, so there's your, I suppose it's, it's the idea that you're going to forfeit so much but of, of your independence, of yourself. That's certainly a point of contention here. I think here. you're, you're going to forfeit the housekeeping that you yeah, are generally right. doing. Right. Yeah. Okay. You're, the mowing you're of forfeiting the, the, uh, <laughs> the, you know, the, the toast and uh, jam that maybe you're having at all three meals because now you're going to have, you know, someone coming in and doing that housekeeping for you and you're going to have, you know, amazing choices for three meals a day, including snacks. So, yeah. And, and in my case, it would be forfeit. It would mean forfeiting anything to do with a ladder. And, and I, I can't give that up soon enough, to tell you the truth. You put me on a ladder, I'm on the ground. We'll take a quick break here. It's Boomer Life with our friends from Rivera Retirement Living and Fleetwood Villa in Surrey, with lots more still ahead after this quick timeout. Canada's only weekly radio show dedicated to the baby boomer lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on CIL 650.